Good evening all and welcome. Tonight we're going to be heading into the woods for our hunt for the elusive cryptid Bigfoot. So I hope you're ready. Don't forget to download our app for even more content without ads. But for now it's time to get comfortable. Links to the app in the description. And let the darkness take control. This is my father's story. He and my grandparents were camping out by Lake Tahoe. And all day my grandpa said that they felt like they were being watched. My grandpa described a general feeling of just something not feeling right. That night, they had built a big fire and had gotten in their tents. And they began to hear all strange noises. They described it as a wolf howling but if it were 10 times deeper. My grandpa decided it would be best to keep the fire lit at night. My grandpa stayed up all night out of protection of his family in fear. At around 3.45, he says he opened the tent flap and looked outside to see what he says is the most terrifying thing he's ever seen. A large black humanoid figure walking circles around the fire. The thing had no distinguishable features except for its giant pair of yellow eyes. Just then my grandpa said an awful scent filled the air, like something had been rotting for over eight years. The last thing my grandpa saw before he went back into the tent was the figure returning to the woods, and he saw three others exactly like the one he saw waiting for the figure. Grandpa loaded his gun and he says nothing else happened, and they left the next day. The story still gives me nightmares to this day. My grandpa had a hunting buddy in the 70s who was basically a hermit in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. He was staying with him in his cabin, deep in the Cascade Mountains during a hunting trip. No running water, no electricity, miles away from the nearest town or paved road. His cabin was built on stilts and on an incline. They had a 10 foot balcony from the base of the bottom of the stilts with no stairs or ladder to climb up on. My grandpa claims that he knew this man for a long time and said that he didn't have the personality to lie. I've also known my grandpa never to be one for BS. One night during the trip, they were relaxing at the cabin after a hunt and his buddy tells him that Sasquatch is in the area and to be careful going out at night. Thinking he was pulling his leg, my grandpa chuckled and didn't think too much about it. His friend then put on a very serious face and grabbed a few pieces of fruit, bread and jerky and placed them in a bowl. He took the bowl out of the balcony and set it on the edge and said, it'll be empty by morning and then went to bed. It was an open floor single room cabin, about 300 square feet. My grandpa had a cot set up near the balcony window and was awoken in the middle of the night by rustling outside. He peeked through the windows and saw the bowl empty. And still to this day, claims he saw four fingers resting on the edge of his balcony just before letting go. He never went hunting in that area again. I was 27 and working at a Boy Scouts camp far up in the woods of very northernly Northern California. Where I worked, there was a large population of black bears, which for the most part were rather harmless and easy enough to scare away with a shot from a rifle. However, we had a very large number of Boy Scouts at this camp weekly, sometimes as many as 500 heads with a lot of vastly spread out campsites. There's going to be a few campers who sleep with candy bars in their pockets and basically make themselves pre-packaged dinner snacks for a bear. I tell you this, black bears love Reese's peanut butter cups. As part of staff, oftentimes I was scheduled for bear watch and basically strolled the entirety of the camp with a rifle going from site to site, making my presence known as to ensure the bears wouldn't come anywhere near. One of these routine nights, Everything was still and more quiet than usual. I remember finding it rather odd and unsettling. 
I just checked in on the camp furthest away from all of the campsites. It was a good mile and a half away from base proper. As I'm strolling along the trail that runs beside the lake, I stop and take a number one and light a joint that I had stashed away for such an occasion as being out by the lake at two in the morning. As human beings, we have a natural gut feeling we must always adhere to for our survival. There was definitely a gut feeling I had that things were amiss. Not only was it unusually still and quiet, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched and that I was most certainly not alone. I nervously took a few puffs from my J and then put it out. Now, being more aware of the unnerving sense in the air, I've been face to face with a bear. I've been stalked by a mountain lion. I've slept a little too close to a den of coyotes late in the night, but this was different. I didn't have the sense that I was in the presence of any of these animals. The smell was overwhelming. It didn't smell like any bear I've experienced. It was almost sour, but still musky. I'll never forget the smell. It's truly hard to accurately describe. And as I reached for my flashlight, before considering readying my rifle, a massive boom hit the ground, falling from the trees above me and nearly knocking me to my ass from the sheer force of it. I reached for my flashlight that had fallen to the ground as I heard something large and massive run away into the tree line, up into the hill above. Immediately, I considered it was probably the biggest bear I'd ever come across, and black bears can be spooked easily. So at first, I considered myself lucky. But as I lay there hyperventilating, shaking and quaking in my boots, I started to consider the sound of the beast running away. It didn't sound like the stride of a black bear in a flight. It sounded bipedal, it almost sounded human. I braced myself, stood up and readied my rifle, released the safety and shot upwards into the air toward the lake. It woke up many campers and the scoutmasters alike. I stood there for a good 10 minutes alone before a camp leader came, as well as other staff, towards me. During that time I had my flashlight out and was inspecting the scene. Whatever had dropped from the branch above fell from possibly 20 feet and in its wake had torn off the branches in the hill line that stood 13 feet from the ground, and some smaller trees were bent almost all the way into the ground. I have never seen a bear do that, that's for sure. By the time some of the staff and some concerned campers arrived, everyone was stumped. Most campers, to comfort themselves, insisted it was just a bear. But I do know this. No bear running on all fours stands 13 feet tall, and no bear can run on two feet for 12 yards uphill on two legs. They just can't do that. We're all thinking it, so I'll say it. I think I encountered a Sasquatch that night. If not, I really don't know what it was, but I'm glad it was running away from me and not at me. Because whatever that thing was, beast or man, it was gargantuan, and I would not have stood a chance had it decided to confront me. When I was 14, a friend and I would go fishing just about every day of summer. We would walk about an hour to an hour and a half through the woods and over bogs to a series of rivers that we called the Steadies. They flowed into a very large lake. The last trip there, we were walking along one of the rivers. The rivers are narrow, maybe five feet across, at 14, very easy to jump across from side to side. We stumbled up on a large pile of animal bones and kind of got worried, but assumed perhaps a hunter had quartered their game in there. We walked to the edge of the bank and right in the center of the river, clear as day, was a large footprint, barefoot, distinguishable toes, but just one, the left. It was big, even more so magnified by the water. I called to my friends and look, but as I said his name, I heard a loud rumble and the tree shaking on the other side. I looked at my friends, but all I saw was the dust he was kicking up from running away, to which I promptly followed. We never went back. We told people, but no one believed us. I've told this story before, but it's worth repeating. I live in central California in the valley border on all sides by hills and mountain ranges. 
there were some great hikes and campgrounds all around, and my ex and I chose to go hiking in the Sespi wilderness. It's about a two hour drive from home, and it's basically hiking in the mountains southwest of Bakersville off the highway that leads to the Ojai and the coast. Gorgeous country, very remote, no cell service. We were both archaeology hobbyists and decided to hike out past Piedras Blancas, a giant rock formation, and keep on that same trail, paralleling the Sespi Creek, in order to look for some Chumash pictographs. It's about a five mile hike, hilly terrain full of scrub bush and smaller trees. The trail is well maintained and we were mostly alone out there. We reach an old campground about three to four miles out and I'm feeling tired. So I stop to rest at the campground. It's pretty much circular. There are several different campsites all in plain view of one another and just to the east there's a large rock formation that overlooks the creek. The rock formation is kind of flat, so I go over and lay down on the warm rock so that I can listen to the water. He decides to continue further along the trail to see if he can locate the pictographs. I don't know how much time had passed when I hear the strangest howling scream I've ever heard. It went on for longer than a human should have been able to scream, and it alternated from being very low and guttural to high-pitched like a woman. So I shoot up off the rocks and start looking around, and I don't see anything. The sound didn't repeat, and I started to think that maybe I was just hearing an animal. All of a sudden, he comes crashing down the trail at full speed, thinking that he is hearing me scream. He describes hearing it a little differently. That sound I heard was not the sound he heard, but we both agree we heard something very strange we cannot explain away. We both kind of looked around the camp, but didn't see anything out of the ordinary, and decide together that it's time to head back. So the sun is starting to set. It's late afternoon, and although it's still light out, it's that late afternoon golden hour kind of light. We're walking back and still on the trail that parallels the creek, and we start to hear boulders being thrown in the water. If you've ever been a kid by a body of water, you know what it feels like to pick up the heaviest rock you can and toss it in the water to hear the satisfying kaplunk sound that heavy rocks make. This was heavier than that, and we knew it. We heard it several times following us along the trail and crashing sounds in the brush from across the creek. Whatever was throwing the rocks was following us, making sure we knew that we were not welcome. I have no idea what type of animal could throw very large boulders in the water like that. If it was a human, they did a damn fine job of pranking us because we were terrified. We hurried as fast as we could, and I ended up slipping on the trail and got a splinter in my arm that I wasn't able to dig out for months. We made it back to the parking lot near dark. I've only found one other online post about strange things happening in this Sespi Creek. I still don't know what we heard. My husband and I live in Willow Creek, California. Our small town revolves around Bigfoot, and everything here is Bigfoot themed. We even have a cage in case he's ever captured. Our property is 40 acres and surrounded by forest service land. We have no neighbors, and we've always felt like we're watched. We barely hear any wildlife and have rarely seen any, despite living in the woods. A couple of separate nights, we've had knocking on our bedroom wall slash window, and it certainly freaked us out, but we've since brushed it off. Tonight though, my husband had to take our quad up to the generator above our house to fill our solar panels with water. It was pitch black, and as soon as he turns around the quad and turns it off, he is loudly screamed at by what he was convinced and described to me as a large male humanoid. He did what he had to do and left quickly. He is convinced whatever it was, was not human, as it's extremely unlikely we have someone else living in the woods. I'm trying to chalk it up as an animal, but it's getting hard to. Do you think it sounds like Bigfoot behavior? I was staying in a cabin on the border of Pennsylvania and Maryland in the mountains. One day we were snowed in, 
and when you're snowed in there, you're stuck. Now there are plenty of bears and deer up there, and we kept salt licks, corn, and all kinds of stuff around it, not to hunt, but just to feed them. While I walk by the back window, which is over the underground garage where we keep snowmobiles and four-wheelers, and I see this big brownish looking thing in the woods, probably 50 feet from the cabin, just sitting in the snow. I was shaken because I'd never really seen a bear there, but heard the stories about them being around. So I ran to get my mum to show her, and as we walked back to the window, the damn thing stood up. And I don't mean like a bear, I mean like a big tall man standing up. In that turned around and walked with a huge stride, and took off into the woods. We stood there shocked. What the hell was that? And my uncle just says, Oh, that's just Sasquatch. He's a celebrity around here. I don't know if he was just trying to make us feel better by diffusing the situation with a comic remark, but I never went into those woods alone again. The woods by where my father grew up have old abandoned houses scattered throughout the woods. I am from the Hudson Valley, New York. Anyone from around the area should know that the woods have old houses or at least the foundations remaining. When he was younger, he and everyone else basically would climb up this mountain to an abandoned house. He said it had old black and white nudes, but a lot of kids would go up there to smoke and hang out, so a lot of things were smashed. Part of the trip up the mountain basically involved climbing up a cliff, blanking on proper term just a flat rock surface you had to scale. This was also his usual way down. So one night he went up alone and was working his way down. Night was settling in, and he was lowering himself down the drop, when he felt an odd presence and glanced up towards where he was standing. Basically what he saw was a quick glance, because whatever it was, just made him climb down the mountain and run home. He described it as very tall, lumbering above him, and covered in hair. It wasn't a bear, at least from the glance he got. Normally you'd take things your parents tell you and have some doubts, and her sharing some of his stories that he told me made it more believable. There was also the whole, you see what you want to see thing, so who knows? I'm terrified of heavily wooded areas, if I'm honest. About 16 years ago, my family and I were up in the White Mountains of Arizona to cut our Christmas tree. My dad was driving our truck with my grandpa in the front seat and my mum and sister in the back. I was in the bed of the truck along with our family's German short-haired pointer. We were driving along a forest road and all of a sudden my dog starts barking and growling. So I look to see what it is, thinking it's maybe a bear or mountain lion. What I saw was a tall dark figure walking parallel to the road about 60 to 70 yards away. I yelled at my dad to stop the truck. When I told him I think I see Bigfoot, he laughed and continued to drive. When I looked back to get another look at it, the figure had changed direction and was walking away from the road. The last thing I saw were the thing's head disappearing down a hill. To this day, I still do not have any explanation for what I saw. And every time the situation comes up, my dad always makes me tell everyone my story, just so that he can laugh at it. I was in third grade, staying in a small cabin with my family. My parents slept in one room with my younger brother in their bed, and my older sister in a sleeping bag on the floor. I slept on a couch, that pulled out to a bed with my best friend Colin, who they let bring with us. We stayed up very late playing Game Boy, and I had fallen asleep when it was his turn at around 3am. He woke me up by nudging me, and as I woke up I asked him what he wanted. He shushed me, and pointed out the window above the couch where we were sleeping. Outside the window, we saw a swing set that was definitely taller than my dad, Towering over the swing set was this hairy, shadowy figure. It was very dark, and we were deep in the redwoods with no outside light other than the moon. The cabin we were staying in had a bit of a clearing, so it wasn't quite as dark as the forest. 
I was frozen in shock. I'd heard many stories of Bigfoot, but never thought it was real or that I would see one. The area was known for sightings, and they sold many souvenirs related to it. After staring at the creature for 60 seconds, I could see its eyes were looking back at us. It then walked downhill into the trees with long strides. We both confirmed with each other that we weren't dreaming, and it was positively amazing. We were both excited at this point, not scared. We must have both been exhausted from hiking all day and staying up late because we went to bed shortly after. The next morning we told my parents. They of course didn't believe us and said it was a nice story. We joked about how we both saw Bigfoot for years to come. A group of friends and I were staying at this remote cabin that one of my friend's cousins owned. There were no real roads leading to the cabin, and it was a good three-quarter day hike from where you parked the cars. I couldn't go at the same time as everyone else due to work obligations, so decided to head up that same day but later. It would mean I would have to camp for a night by myself though, as the latter part of the trail is too dangerous to be taken at night, especially by someone who doesn't know it. I didn't care. I was kind of looking forward to it, as I've never camped alone before. So I was in the middle of these woods when the sun went down. I got my camp set up in this small clearing, probably about 40 feet across, get my campfire going, and pitch myself a small one-person tent. Do all that camping stuff like cooking hot dogs over a stick over the fire and s'mores. I probably stay up a good two to three hours after dark. It was mid-autumn, so the days were somewhat short. The entire time I thought I heard stuff moving in the woods at the edge of the clearing. I didn't think anything of it at the time, because the woods are of course full of animals. But as the night went on I realised that whatever it was was just circling the clearing over and over. Once I started paying attention, it made four or five laps around before I decided to get up and investigate. The noise stopped as soon as I stooped up, and I thought I heard sound going away through the woods. I just shrugged it off, thinking it was a fox or some curious critter that got scared when I stood up. I decided it was time to sleep, douse the fire, and climb into my tent. I start to doze off, and stay in that half-asleep, half-awake state for a while. I normally hear weird stuff when I'm in this state, so I don't think much of it when I hear a voice. Something then wakes me up all the way, and I realize the voice is real. I'm right outside my tent. It's just above a whisper, and I'm not sure if it was another language, or if they were just speaking English in such a way that I couldn't understand it. I lay there for some time, I don't know how long, listening and waiting for something to happen. There is just enough moonlight to light up the walls of the tent, so I can see a ham pressed into the wall of my tent down near my foot. This freaks me out, and I sit up quickly. Whoever was outside the tent tore us out of there, like running full sprint through the woods. I get out of the tent and shine my flashlight around to see nothing. I was expecting there to be a bloody hamperet on the tent, but nope. I didn't sleep that night. I packed up camp at first light and booked it to the cabin. My mum likes to tell me the story of how my great grandma could run faster than her. Apparently they were going fishing in the creek about a mile or so behind my grandma's house when they started smelling some rotten smell and hear splashing. They turned the corner and saw a large, humanoid creature, covered in dark hair, splashing around and having a good time. They dropped the poles, and Grandma beat Mum back to the house by a good hundred feet. They found several deer carcasses gutted around that time as well. Also, we live in Illinois, 
so probably not a bear, more likely a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. We were camping along the Sunshine Coast in Lower Mainland British Columbia. It was the off season, so not too many campers in the area, and we were in some beautiful land, lush jungle-like forested area right beside the ocean. 5 a.m. in the morning, right before dusk, right behind our tent. We were camping by literally no other people. I hear this strange sound, like a woo kind of sound, as loud as it could possibly be. I woke up real quick and asked my husband if he heard it too, and he said he did. I asked him what he thought it would be, and he said, Do you want me to be honest with you? I think it was a Sasquatch. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way, and started thinking about all the animals in the area and the different calls they would make, and I'm a pretty avid camper and live in the country, so I recognize plenty of different animal calls. Cougar? No. Bear? No. Owl? Nah, I didn't think so. I didn't go to sleep and kept the knife in my hand for an hour before the sun came up, while I was on my phone googling what Sasquatches sound like. I know there's a ton of conspiracy about this, but we did find a recording of a supposed Sasquatch that sounds similar to what we heard. I can't find it now. We went to town later that day and told a local and he's like, yeah, lots of sightings around here. Natives even have a totem dedicated to them. When I was about five or six years old, my mother, father, grandmother and I went to this restaurant out in a semi-remote location, which has since been turned into a factory area. But at the time, it was a log cabin type restaurant backed off the road in the woods. My father is a really big talker and he'll pretty much have a conversation with anyone if they got him talking. He was closing up a conversation with this guy who he went to high school with and hadn't seen in a long time. My mother, grandmother and I went outside to head onto the vehicle. I was getting tired because it was late, so my grandma picked me up. She was holding me in a bear hug. Then I saw something, a very tall figure, illuminated probably seven to eight feet tall, completely covered in blonde hair, sort of like cousin from the Adams Family movie, but with more noticeable features. I just said to my granny, it's a monster. She turned around and saw it too, and we began running towards the car. About this time, my mum noticed it as well. It didn't come towards us, it just turned and stared. We were freaking out, and then my dad came out the building. He started running too because we were terrified, but didn't get a chance to see it, because once he came around, it took off into the woods, or at least out of eyesight. I know Bigfoot seems like a hard pill to swallow, but I saw something that night. I know it was a child, but we all saw it. And my mum and I talked about it for the first time in years today because we drove by the place the restaurant used to be at. And she described it exactly how I remembered it. My cousin and I were heading home from Montana through the Black Hills. I had picked out a spot to camp at and planned on just setting up camp in the back of my truck and sleeping so I could just set a pin for what looked like a dead-end road to sleep at. We pull up onto the main road and get to the spot probably two miles back, and we notice there is a logging operation going on. So I pull off the side in case they're going to be working on a Saturday, and I shine my light around the perimeter and we don't see anything. So we're setting up our bed, and my cousin hears this bang that sounds like someone is smacking a stick on an excavator beam whatever hard metal was out there, I suppose. And so he looks at me and says, did you hear that? And immediately after saying that, we hear a second bang and decide to get the hell out of there. So we pack our stuff up and drive by the area where we heard the noise. So I pull up and open my windows and show my flashlight at the area, which is a hill, and see two sets of eyes. The space between the eyes were probably six to eight inches apart, and they were both clearly looking at my vehicle. One was about six feet off the ground, and the other was probably four foot taller. So I reverse because they're moving around and I yell out the window, hey, who's there? I don't get a response, but just drive the hell out of there. 
ended up concluding it was probably standing on some sort of equipment, but I'm not sure what those eyes were. I'm going to speak to the local rangers and community tomorrow. I really need to know what happened in Haydraw. I lived in southern Oregon at the time, on a 30-acre ranch. Our property backed up to a river and across from the river the woods. I came home from work one night to an empty house, and as I'm walking to the back door from my truck I hear rustling in the bushes. We normally get a lot of deer traffic through the property, so naturally I just come and yell, Hey! It wasn't a deer though. Nothing ran away. Instead I hear whatever it was come through the bushes, take two huge steps towards me, and takes breaths exhaling loudly and deeply, unlike anything I've ever encountered living out here. I froze up for a second, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up, as I realized this thing was a lot bigger than I was. I ran inside, turned the spotlights on but didn't see anything. I told people this story and they always say, oh it was a bear or an elk. I'm familiar with bear and elk sounds, and the only bear we have out there are skittish black bears. What do you guys think it could have been? The two steps towards me sounded like a man stomping as hard as he could, and the breathing was deep and gruff, almost like a bull. I live in a really small town in Hungary, at the very end of town just me and my neighbour next to a forest. We have been playing a lot in the forest and we saw strange things in there from a very young age. My friend Barland showed me about Bigfoot. I immediately opted to take a look for it in the forest, keep in mind I was seven at the time, and we went with a hatchet, knife, flashlights and food, and swept through whichever area we could. Part is separated by a train track, and also the ruins of a house. There was a bridge under the train track for the river passing under, and there we found large patches of fur. My friend kept a sample from it. We also have a ranch as we keep horses, and some fences were scratched, torn and broken in half, some even gone, and in the scratches, bits of fur. So we kept going back to try and find Bigfoot. We set up traps, bait, and even went camping, sometimes sleeping in the forest, having watches at night from my house. Here are some encounters. The first time was a patch of fur, the second was a human-like creature eating parsnips from the barn we had, which I saw at night while feeding the dogs. I told father, and we came back with his gun, actually seeing the thing run away, even faster as I didn't know who or what it was. And this is the kind of person who will be slapped by an alien and not believe it. One time my friend's rabbits were cut open and freed from the cages, almost surgically precise, with half of their insides missing. Then during a late night sweep, I lay down to tie my shoe while my friend was looking around, when a six foot tall thing ran past me towards my friend who jumped, and his flashlight threw a clear view of it. It was definitely nothing from this world. Six foot tall, light brown hair, and built like the Hulk. The thing ran over my friend, literally leaving him with a broken rib and we never went back to the forest since. The town mayor, who I maintain a good relationship, called the police on dogs vanishing. He told me that animals would go missing or turn up dead. I wonder if I set up traps if I'll get anything. No one in the town suspects Bigfoot, nor is my friend's rabbit incident Bigfoot related. I'm just saying it's all suspect. There's definitely something strange out there. All of this takes place on Vancouver Island. My name is Cameron, I'm 17, and it was about two years ago now, at the beginning of June. My friends and I went up to the island to go camping. We camped out on a sandy beach with the woods behind us. The first night there, there wasn't much activity. It was just the sound of waves, which was pretty calming. But on the second night before we went to sleep, we were all around the campfire, when after a while we started to hear bats and got freaked out, so went into the tent and joined the others, and told scary stories. 
By the time I had started to get paranoid and tried to calm myself with music and drifted off to sleep, but every two to three hours I would get up for absolutely no reason. It was probably between three to four in the morning when I woke up, took my headphones off, and heard someone or something walking around outside on the sand. It didn't sound like an animal walking on its four legs, but more like someone heavy walking on two feet. And after a while, I fell back asleep. It started to rain during the night, so I didn't get to investigate to see if there were any footprints. And thankfully, we already planned to leave that day, but it got me thinking. What if it was a Bigfoot? It couldn't have been someone else from another campsite, since we were quite far away from anyone else. And it couldn't have been anyone from our group, since it was four in the morning, and everyone was already sound asleep. Was Bigfoot the reason why I was so paranoid before going to sleep? Anyway, just think about that. For now, I've got another story. All of this has been happening for almost a year. I also want to point out that I live by a small town near the native reserve. My house I live on is on the reserve side and has bushes at the back of the house. So we would always hear of bear sightings and cougar sightings around here but I've never heard any of those at the time this happened. I've lived here in the same house for almost my entire life and never had any experiences like these before. One night I was trying to sleep downstairs in the living room on the couch. The couch is right next to the window and our backyard at the time didn't have a fence around the garden or yard, although we do have a wooden porch we made. I was trying to sleep on the couch when I heard something move in the bush and turned off my music to listen. And I hear it happen for a few seconds, and the next few minutes I hear what sounds like someone heavy walking on the wooden porch. After a while it stops, but a few seconds later I hear two taps on the window so I run upstairs. All of this happened around Christmas at 1 going into 2 in the morning. Every few nights in summer, I would hear something move in the bush, like someone walking around big tree branches. I've never gone back there to take a look, but I've noticed an almost dead tree taken down somehow. It's never windy in the summer, so someone or something must have done that. Usually every morning, my mum would open our back door to let our dog out in the back to use the washroom. At this time, we have a fence around the garden and a yard and have two gates. One to get into the backyard that we can open from the side of the house and one to get into the garden. So my mum lets our dog out, but the yard gate is open. My mum goes out to start the car for work and my dog's there running around smiling. My mum's confused because we had the yard gate closed and we didn't have anyone over the past night. No one else knew how to open this particular gate, but our very close friends and family. Another morning I was awake with my mum, and she opened the back door to let the dog out, but found the garden gate was open already, and no one should have been there. A few days pass by, and I go out for a ride with my mum to town for some groceries. On the way back, I tell her about the noise in the bush, She turned down the radio and started talking in a serious tone and said that there had been stories from up in the island about Bigfoot and that he's a part of our culture. We talk a bit and she talks to me about the gates opening without any of us using it and we both start to get suspicious and drive home. This happened another night after I came home from work. I usually go upstairs right away and chill on my bed. This time I heard something moving in the bushes again, but I pushed it off as nothing and went downstairs to open my can of fruit. As I went into the kitchen from the living room and looked outside, and for a split second I saw what I thought were two yellow eyes behind the fence shoulder height. I didn't realize until I got upstairs. The next morning I went down and looked out the window to see if anything was there and there was nothing out of the ordinary. We have solar powered light bulbs in the back, but they don't really work all the time 
their blue in a dim, and weren't bright as the eyes. There weren't any lights on the fence, and I saw them much brighter. Nothing much has happened since, but I do believe there's a Bigfoot that lives on this island. My brother and I lived in a neighborhood in Idaho when we were kids. The school to my house is just a few blocks, so we always just walk because it's close by. One day, I had to stay after school because I needed help on some homework. I'm the eldest, and at the time, my brother is afraid to walk home alone, even if it's just a few blocks. I get annoyed and tell him to just walk home by himself, that there's nothing to be afraid of and it's nearby. He goes and I do my homework, when after a few minutes he comes back out of breath with a shocked look on his face. I can tell he got spooked and just told him to wait for me in the classroom. On the walk back home he tells me that he saw a black Sasquatch-like creature going in circles around him super fast when he was walking home. He then saw a brown Sasquatch hiding behind the shed near our house looking at him and also running super fast elsewhere. I won't lie. I did start getting spooked by stuff he was telling me. Me being the big brother, told him that if something comes, I will hit it with our backpacks. We make it home and I start unlocking the door. I did it fast because I was kind of creeped out. My brother walks in, and as I'm about to walk in, I turn to see across the street, a bright yellow Sasquatch-like creature looking at me. Then it turns around and runs away very fast. It was incredibly fast. I bolted and shut the door behind me, locking it. I'm totally freaked out and tell my brother that I saw one too. We call our mum and freaked out over the phone. She told us we'd just seen too many horror movies. I have no idea what those things were. The fact that I saw a yellow one makes it even crazier. And I need to know if anyone else has ever encountered anything like this. For our anniversary, my wife and I rented a cabin around Divide, Colorado. Our last night there, it started to snow. We were laying in bed and clearly heard footsteps on the front porch of the cabin. I'm a believer in Bigfoot, so I look out the window and there was no sign of anything. No prints in the fresh snow either. I laid back down and it happened two more times. Each time I looked out the window, there was nothing. After that, we heard a wrestling noise coming from the roof. That happened a few times, but I didn't dare go outside to look to see what the hell it was. They sounded heavy. Hey guys, Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. We haven't had a Bigfoot feature in a long time, so I thought it was time to bring back old Bigfoot. I really hope that you enjoyed tonight's stories. Certainly an interesting collection to say the least. I personally do believe in Bigfoot. I would love to see, you know, it one day. Um, it's pretty creepy though. <laughs> A lot of the stories are very similar from all the ones I've narrated. Noticeable things are always the smell, uh, throwing of rocks, you know, approaching fires and stuff. Like when you mark that when they mark their territory when they let you know that you're in their territory they will throw rocks um it's just interesting all these stories that i've heard and read um really kind of built up a picture isn't it in any case i'd like to extend an extra huge thank you to my members and patrons whose names are available on screen now thanks guys you're all amazing they actually help with the running of the channel and stuff um with contributions every month and if you would like your name at the end of the video you can contribute too that'd be awesome anyway guys i think i'm going to leave it here more videos on screen now if you are more inclined to keep going but for now stay awesome and i'll see you in the next one